So welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 5. This time we're looking at online communication. And the things we're going to be covering is your basic communication practice, the teaching triangle, um, different forms of methods of communication, and we'll go into some cyber safety stuff. Uh, that leads us into social media. I'm going to demonstrate some content curation with Scoopit. We'll have a little look at Google Glass, which is not here yet, and I'll demonstrate how to do a mail merge. So to start off with the teaching triangle, you always want to think of the communication between teachers, parents and students as an important facet. You can easily have a communication with your students in your class just by face to face or you might be emailing them. But how much communication is going on between the parents and the students? If you say to the students you need to tell your parents this, you normally write it in the diary or you might email direct to the parents. So then you have some kind of communication going. But you, if any one of those three uh, individuals is not involved in that communication or not involved in the teaching ideals and student practice, you, the triangle is going to fall apart. So you need to have all three of the parties on the same page. So basic communication practice. When you get into your class, now this probably won't happen when you're on pra your prac, but when you get into in your class, hopefully when you've got a contract and you're teaching next year, best thing you can do is contact your parents within the first two weeks and keep a communication a record of your communication. Um, by doing this, if you send a email or you ring the parents is the best way of doing it, you're setting up a dialogue and next time when you actually, when you want to speak to them, you've already had the first conversation. So when you go back to say, ah, oh, little Jared's been a pain in the butt in my class, you, they've already rung them and spoken to them and had a conversation to start with. They go, hi Jared, how are you going? Or hi Mr. Johnson. So you've already overcome the first uh, trepidation when the, the teacher rings home. Setting up class emails is really important because you want to be able to send an email home to all the parents in the class very quickly. You don't want to have to sit there and type them all out. And can I please tell you, put the parents' emails in BCC when you're emailing them. Don't put it in the two because otherwise all the parents get the email from each other. So you would need to do that. Now I'm just going to quickly show you how to do that on Outlook. Doesn't matter whether you're using Outlook uh, or any other program. Uh, if I go new, new email message, see how I've got this one here, it says two. So I would put in my address in there. When you go to put in, if CC is carbon copy and BCC is blind carbon copy, if you put all your email addresses in here, then they think that they've sent it to you, you've sent it to yourself and to them only. So the good thing is they think it's a personalized email and write it as if you're speaking just to them. Okay, methods of communication. Learn anywhere, anytime. So you, if you can form a, some form of communication with the students, whether it's email or learning platform or Facebook, or some other social media, it means you're actually getting out of the classroom and be able to communicate with your students effectively without having to do face-to-face -face communication. It means that if a student is sitting there, they go, oh, what did Mr. Johnson say in the class? They can go back and look at their emails and check them. Cyber safety. Um, Cyber, Cyber Smart is a website uh, over in, well, it's in Australia, but it's a cybersmart.gov.au forward slash schools. But basically, cyber safety is about maintaining a safe practice whilst online. It's not to say we should be blocking everything. Uh, there is an issue, and uh, people will argue this point, and we'll, this will be one of the discussion points. We don't necessarily want to lock everything down. If you lock everything down, you're actually preventing students from making mistakes and therefore preventing them from learning from those, their mistakes. We don't. We teach students to behave themselves and to respect each other, and we then we let them go and play out in the yard. We don't then say you must play over in that corner and not touch anyone else and not interact with anyone else. You know, you each have one tree you can sit under. We allow them to play out in the yard. That they make mistakes, they may get into fights, or they may have things happen, and then we deal with it and we educate them. So in the same way that in cyber safety. We need to make sure we're educating students to make the right choices. Follow this to identify whether or not it's important and who you need to contact. But you can see that there's a there's a very direct structure in place to identify exactly what's happened. Now, if you're involved in, in a cyber safety incident, so in other words, something happens or you, you're aware, you're made aware of it, the question is, do you have a digital duty of care to report it? I would honestly say that if you have, if you are exposed to something, you have a digital duty of care for the students that you're in your in your care. Going on to social communication in class, um, I'm also going to say just a quick thing on Facebook as well. Some teachers will have students on their Facebook page as friends. Now, if you are a parent, it's strongly suggested that you have your your own children 
um, you're friends with your own children. So that way you can be aware of what's going on in their lives. You can keep an eye on them. Dr. Michael Cargreg also suggests that you have their password so you can check their their Facebook at any time. You may never check it, but the fact that the students think that you're going to check it means they'll be more careful about what they post. If you choose to take on a student um, as one of your friends, you're therefore taking on a duty of care for that student. So if they're posting things that seem inappropriate or seem scary, then you need to deal with that and, and deal with it quickly. And it's the same way. So you, if you had a friend of the family come and stay over at your house, you take on the duty of care whilst they're staying at the house. And the same thing online. Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and Scoop are the next things I'm gonna go over. Here is my Facebook account. Now my Facebook account is very open. It's a, a what I would consider a public Facebook page where um, I monitor my own Facebook page. If someone posts something that I think is inappropriate, I'll, I'll take it down immediately. Up here in Facebook, you've actually, you have a settings, which you can adjust, and I would suggest going to your settings. So in here you can see my password is not here. I'm not gonna allow you to see my password. Um, but if I go into privacy, it says who can see my stuff, right? Now at the moment it's set to public. If you change this, you can say, I want this to be friends or only me or close friends, right? So if you were changing it, so now um, you're changing it to be only your close friends can see it and not public, that's not a bad idea. It's a good idea as a teacher. Review all your posts that you've been tagged in. Um, so down here, who can con contact me? You may wish to change this. So only my friends of friends can contact me. Uh, rather than your, so someone has to be a friend of one of your friends before they can actually find you. This is good if you're going out to in, especially in schools and you don't want students to be able to find you. And here, who can look up you from your uh, address? That again, you may say that your friends or, or friends of friends can find you or switch it to everybody. Um, under timeline and tagging, this is something I would say is important. Who can post on your timeline? I would say uh, only me can post on your timeline. You can say friends can post, but I would suggest that you turn this on. So if someone pat tags you or puts something up on your timeline, you need to switch it to be on so that way before it goes onto your timeline, you can review it and go, no, that's not appropriate. I'm a teacher now. I can't show pictures of me being drunk uh, or pictures of me doing inappropriate things um, like you know, getting up and seeing Justin Bieber. Um, I don't want any of that happening. So therefore I can block that before it happens. And who can see things in my timeline? You may wish to adjust this. So here I've got it set to friends of friends. I might say only my friends can see it. If you have friends of friends, well, I might have people who are at my school who are my friends, but they may have family, which means that the family of your friends, who may be students at the school, can see what you're posting. So depending on how public you want to be and how careful you're monitoring your Facebook, that's something you, you want to be worried about. So Twitter is another thing that's being used quite a lot in schools. Uh, you'll need to check that. But Twitter is a good way of putting up, um, I think it's 140 characters at a time, and it's just tweeting stuff. So you can say things that are re really good. I've seen some really good stuff done with Twitter in classrooms. Um, uh, sometimes the teacher will post all the homework questions and you've, all you do is you follow your hashtag. Google Plus is another one where you can set up communities. It's a bit like a protected Twitter or a protected Facebook. Um, and you can set up Google Circles. You need to have a Google account to be able to do it. And you, in this case, you can see I can go into, a commu into the communities I follow. And here are all different things like gamification, um, Coursera, virtual reality, augmented reality, um, and teaching, game-based learning. These are all groups of people that all have similar ideas and interests, and they're all posting together. All right, the next one I'm gonna go over is content curation. A lot of times we wanna curate it. In other words, repost what other people are doing. And one of the best places I go for this is Scoop It. Scoop It is a, uh, basically, a, it's like having your own personal magazine. So I have up here a scoop it button on my top thing, which I can uh, I can click on at any time. And these are each of the different things that I'm curating. So here I've got ICT integration in Australia. So other people can read what I'm doing. And if I go into here, this is all stuff that I found related to uh, education in South Australia, like so it's Google, Google gamification in classes, augmented reality, Google Glass, all things that I'm interested in. And I've reposted them onto my site. Now how do you repost something? Well, say I want to post this video. Now, I can either click and tag or whatever, or I can click the scoop it button. And what it will do is it will go and grab the video and a picture from the video. It will grab the information from down here and it'll package it all up into some little tiny magazine article, which I can then post onto my Facebook page, or sorry, my scoop it 
page like this. And you can see here is here's the picture, and I can go down here. Oops. Go down here and say, wow, I love Google Glass. So much potential. All right, and now because I've linked it to my Facebook, my Twitter, and my, and my LinkedIn, I can post to all those at exactly the same time. Google Glass. Now, Google Glass is something that's really new. It's just coming out. Um, the second launch of Google Glass happened last week. Um, this is Laura Cara. Um, she travels all over the world demonstrating Google Glass. And Google Glass is a way of overlaying information onto what you see. Here are the basics of how to use Glass. This is your touchpad. It runs from your temple to your ear. Tap the touchpad to wake up Glass. You should see the display above your line of sight. Adjust it to see everything. The home screen shows a clock. This is your timeline. It's a row of cards. Things to the left are happening now or coming up, like the weather, an upcoming flight, or an event in your calendar. Now, take that into the next step and put it in the classroom. Imagine if all the students have Google Glass and are sitting there, they can be searching the web just by looking up at their Google Glass. All the information can be overlaid into what they're doing. They may be doing a, a real-time prac, like a science prac in front of them. They look down at the prac and they say, Google, uh, okay, Glass, take a photo. And it can take a photo of what they're doing then it's no more hand, they're not having to use their hands to write notes, they're not having to use their hands to take photos, it's all done through the glass. They can record the video of what's going on and they may, they may use it to narrate what they're doing. Mail mood. So I've got this results. Now I've got here to only two students in this class, so it's Jared Johnson and Linda, and uh, I'm just gonna put in some results. All right, so there's the results. Now 64 I would say is a C, and this grade here is a B in fact. Right, so that's our results. Now, how do I give all those results to people? If I save that now and I open up a Word document, and I'm just going to open up one of the previous created. So, the first thing it's going to do, first thing I want to do is I want to go to Mail Merge. In this case, Mail Merge is here under Mail Merge Manager. Now, this would be slightly different in a, in a Windows environment. And I go create new form letter and get list, open data source. I realize I'm going really fast and I go to find where that where that Excel spreadsheet is and it says, you wanna do this? So I go open it and worksheet one. And you can see it's already pulled in the data, first name, last name. So instead of me writing Jared Johnson over here, let's get rid of that and let's grab this and say, okay, first name, space, last name. Right, now I go over here and I go, what's my result for the assignment? What's the result for the prac? What's the result for the test? And overall, what's my grade? Done. Now just to check it, I'll go down here to ABC and I can see that that's now been populated with my results and Linda's results. I could then go and print that out and give hand out to students or because on here I've put in their email address, I can go email out. Instead of going, I have to select email I'm changing this from text to a HTML message and I'm going to go uh, uh, results. And then all I do is go merge. And that's now taking all the results and sending them off to the different people in the class. In this case, it's Jared and Linda. And my phone's just buzzed to say it's received it. You can see it's sending. It's now sent it. So I'm a student now, waiting to find out how I'm going with my classes. And here's, here's my results, Jared Johnson, and there's the results of what I've sent. Now, really quick way of setting stuff like that up. Um, you can see how easy it is to set this up in here. And as this changes, you can just hit re-email. So you might set up your email, your spreadsheet at the beginning, and then you, as you go along, every time there's a new assignment or a prac or a test done, and the grade's changing, you can have that automated, we'll do that later on when we do Mark's book. But you can actually you can send out your mail merge discussion board all right so you may have students or young family members on facebook or communication media do we have a digital duty of care so this is what i want you to answer do we have a duty of care uh, when we're online second question is as we move more to knowledge collection have we shifted from content creation to be more content curation in other words gathering and sharing information rather than just rewriting it ourselves and lastly, with more and more time spent online, should the learning in your classroom be limited to the walls of the classroom? Or oh, sorry, learning curriculum? Or do, do we need to break out of the classrooms? Do we even need classrooms anymore? So national professional standards that we've covered this, this time was um, standard four, five, and seven. I want us to focus on standard seven, which is engaged professionally with colleagues, parents, and carers. You can see we we're talking about online communication. So this is a really good and easy one to tie in with that. All right, good luck.